Hello, Baz at Got a Ukulele with another instrument review. Um, uh, this one has actually been around in the UK for quite some time. Uh, this is the iUke. It's a piccolo instrument, uh, which means it's quite a bit smaller than a soprano. Um, and I first came across one of these at one of the ukulele festivals in the UK, probably 18 months ago now. And uh, loads of people were buying them. And I had a play of a number, and I didn't really like it. Uh, Mark Pugh at Stones Music had seen my review of the John Daniel piccolo. Ukulele that was made in Wales. Um, and in that review, I'd said that I wasn't really a fan of the IUK. Now, I hadn't reviewed one. And fair enough, Mark said, well, I think you should have a look at one properly uh, and do a proper review because I think your mind may be changed. So he sent one over on test. And here it is. This IUK is in piccolo, uh, pineapple shape. They also do them in figure of eight, lots of different uh, finishes on the top. And it is a £79 ukulele. And for the £79, you also get a nice uh, zippered and embroidered gig bag, um, yay, which is cool. Um, and for that, you get a solid top uh, instrument, laminate back and sides, uh, and it is a uh, cedar top. I think the back insides are mahogany, sapili, nato wood, something like that. It's a hardwood, um, but a solid top instrument, pretty good for 79 quid, even though it is small. Um, the, the the reason I, I wasn't really liking it when I was playing other people's at the Cheltenham Ukulele Festival was down to the tuning, which this is designed to be tuned to G C E A like a soprano, but a whole octave above, which I think is a bit shrill, um, and I didn't like the width of the neck, but uh, you know it it. it I've got big fingers, um, but there we are, let's have a look. Uh, really nicely built actually, um, flawless, no issues with it at all. We've got a nice grain uh, in, on the top running down and also the sides, uh, which are one piece. That grain follows through and the back, which almost has a bit of shimmer in it, nice grain running north-south. Um, inside we've got the maker's label there which also you'll see the Aquila strings logo as well as the IU logo. This was developed in conjunction with Aquila. Uh, these strings were developed specifically for the IU to take it up to that high GCEA. Um, and it is a partnership thing between the two of them. So you've got a couple of good brands there that are working on this. Um, solid top, uh, rosewood slotted uh, bridge. I think that's screwed on as indicated by those two uh, perloid markers. Um, the edges of the body and the back are not bound. Now I can see there, you know, I've got a problem with that, but you can see the sandwich of the laminate there on the back piece, which I think is a bit scruffy, but the top you can see it's a solid piece of wood. Um, I think binding somewhere might have been nice, but there we are, binding doesn't make any noise. I do like the finish of the neck. This is one of my favorite parts of it. Uh, it's rosewood topped, nice even colour with a nice bit of detailing there at the end uh, and the edges are smoothed off and rolled, um, you can't feel the fret edges at all, really really nicely finished neck that surprised me. Um, the edges are not bound but they are stained so you can't see the edges of the frets unless you look very closely. We have 12 nickel silver frets down to the body, which is fairly standard for soprano and below. Perloid markers at the 5th, 7th and 10th, which is pretty standard, but uh, no side markers. Um, looking at the back of the neck, it's actually made from a, three pieces of wood with a joint here. Strangely, a joint here, and then all the way up to the headstock is one piece. Um, that's not a lot of wood, uh, I think, to demand three pieces to make it. Uh, I don't know the reason for that, but uh, price, I suppose. Otherwise, though, it's a nice profile. It's nice, ni very nicely finished. Um, but again, back to that nut width issue. That, that's my gripe with it. This is already a very small uke. Uh, uh, but that nut width, I think, is a bit overly small. Let's see if I can show you the difference. This is essentially the same size uke as the John Daniel. 
want to the John Daniel here with the spots on the headstock. And if I line up the nuts to each other, so they're flat on the base, you can see the Daniel is three, four mil, maybe more, thicker, uh, three mil thicker, let's say, at the headstock, uh, the nut. And I think you really do notice that difference uh, when you're playing it. It's not a lot. Uh, the fret spacing between the two ukes is pretty much the same. Uh, looking at them there, you can't see that. Uh, but that's the difference at the, at the nut. Um, and that makes this more comfortable to my fingers anyway. And this uh, a little bit overly cramped. There are one or two players out there who are masters of the tiny instruments who may be looking at this thinking, what a load of rubbish. Um, but I think because this is aimed at a beginner, hence the GCEA tuning and the, uh, the ability you can pick this up and play it with exactly the same chord shapes in the same places. I would have thought they could have made that a bit thicker, meaning the whole thing is just easier to play. Uh, but there we are. Um, past the nut, we go on to a headstock, which is kind of unique in shape with the IUK logo embossed in, um, pyrographic, uh, burnt in, looks great. I love the layout of the tuners. Um, something different in that diamond pattern. Uh, the tuners themselves are pretty cheap. Uh, those washers there are cardboard. Uh, for £79, maybe I shouldn't expect much more than that. But they do work, and they hold, actually. Uh, they hold very well. What I do find is that once I put it down for a day or two and then pick up uh, the tuners and turn them, they kind of take a bit, they bite, and they kind of click round, and then everything moves again, and then once they've settled, they... They stay there. They could be easily upgraded, um, I think, if you were so minded to do so. Um, but yeah, they are they are pretty cheap. Um, but other than those little bits, you know, it's a really well put together uke. I love the gig bag. Uh, it's solid. Um, it feels well made. Um, it's got enough little details to it to make it stand out and look different, which I think is good. Um, but, you know, my, my only gripes are the nut width, which I, I, I think is too narrow. Um, and the fact that they developed it specifically to be tuned to GCEA higher than standard. Um, this is just my opinion. I think sopranos already sound pretty shrill. That's kind of part of what the ukulele is. Um, and I find when lots of sopranos are playing together, uh, the same thing, that's even shriller. Throw one of these into the mix and I, I just find the sound starts to grate a little bit. Um, you know... I mean, especially up here. It's kind of music box sounding. With a piccolo for me, um, I'd want to change these strings and take it down a tuning to something like I have on my John Daniel, which is tuned C, F, A, D. Now, that will require you to relearn some songs. Uh, you don't need to relearn chord shapes. The chord shapes will just give you different chords, but they're the same shapes, because the strings will still be in tune with each other relatively. Um, you just have a natural tuning um, that, that suits them well. I don't think this tuning is what suits the shuke well. Um, and I don't think be even beginners should be afraid of learning to transpose, say, five chords uh, into in, into a different uh, uh, into a different key. It's only a case of learning, you know, that playing that there does something else. It's, you know, I don't think it should be so hard. The baritone is exactly the same. It's, uh, it's tuned differently from GCEA. I know that they can be tuned GCEA if you want them to with the right strings. I would just question why. Um, and I think that's that worries me. I mean, I. I realise it's what it's been developed for, and I'm not trying to sound like a snob. It will be brilliant for new players who can just immediately pick it up and go in exactly the same way as they play their soprano. Um, but just question that that sound. I think the probably I would probably find a nicer, more resonant sound if I tuned it down to something like F tuning, um, and that's something to experiment with. And of course, that isn't a reason for me to run this down in my written review, which I haven't done because strings can be changed. Um, but there we are, it's uh, it's a great price. It, it's much nicer instrument than I remember playing. 
I think it's really well built. I love the neck. Um, that's really nicely finished. Uh, and if I owned one, I'd certainly, I think, with the strings off, put some other piccolo strings on and uh, have an experiment um, with some of the tunings because I think I'll probably find something nice in there. The the narrow neck still is a bit of a bit of a bind for me. I I I, I do struggle with some. But it's all right. It's um, it's not the loudest you. Uh, my John Daniel's louder, but again, tuning will have an impact on that too. Sustain is pretty light, but then it's below a soprano, so that's to be expected. Um, and I take back some of what I said. I think it's um, I think it's worth looking at, and it's certainly at the right price. Uh, and there we are. That is the IU Piccolo.